of Roberta Kaplan, Rocky Kaplan, who had been Edie Windsor's lawyer, and her case challenging the federal law that banned recognition of Edie's 44-year marriage to Thea Spire. The Aspire who died in 2009. They were waiting to hear what the ruling in the case was going to be. This case of an 84-year-old woman suing the government because they sucked her with a huge tax when Thea died, as if Thea and Edie had been strangers to each other instead of a married couple. And then they heard that they had won the case. And then President Obama called to say congratulations. And Edie got on the phone and said, hello? Who am I talking to? Oh, Barack Obama. I wanted to thank you. I think your, your coming out for us made such a difference throughout the country. And then later they went down to the LGBT Community Center and they took questions. Thea, you are here for, I don't know if you believe in that, for lack of what do you think she's thinking right now? Thea. Thea. Yeah, what is she thinking now? Well, you did it, honey. <laughs> hey, <I'll be> here. <laughs> were you sure you'd win when you were waiting for the ruling? Oh, now when we were waiting for the ruling, no, no, I prepared three speeches. I did not allow myself to assume we'd win. Okay, that's the truth. Okay, I thought we had every right to win. I thought our arguments were sound and everyone else's were insane. I lucked out when Robbie Kaplan, a litigation partner at Paul Weiss, walked into my life. At a time when the gay organizations that I approached responded with, it's the wrong time for the movement. Robbie Kaplan said, as did Martin Luther King before her, there is no wrong time to seek justice. And we won all the way. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, Robbie Kaplan and your partners at Paul Weiss, for making this all possible. Joining us now is Robbie Kaplan, litigating partner of the legal firm of Paul Weiss. Well, Ms. Kaplan, thank you very much for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked uh, Sandy and Chris a moment ago. Are you too fried to have human emotions at this point? Are you actually psyched, or can you not feel anything? I think the answer is I'm not yet too fried. <laughs> uh, I'm about as psyched as I could possibly be right now. Let me ask you about the point that Edie made today um, when you guys held your press conference, saying that you took this case at a time when strategically a lot of other people thought that she was not the right, she was not the right case, this was not the right vehicle. Why did you know to take it? I just think there's so much about this case that so tells a story about what was so wrong, and I'm so glad to say this, what was so wrong with Section 3 of DOMA, which is now gone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the idea that someone would have to pay a huge tax simply because they were gay, which is what the estate tax was here. Every American understands what it's like to have to pay a tax that's unjust, and this was a tax on being gay. Uh, Edie's age, the 44 years of their relationship together, the fact that Edie nursed First, Thea through multiple sclerosis by the time uh, that they got married. Thea could only lift a finger because of the paralysis from the disease. Any one of us would be so lucky, young or old, gay or straight, to have a spouse like Edie Windsor. And I think all Americans today fully understand and appreciate that. Strategically, thinking about what the court might have done today, there was obviously discussion that they could uh, rule against gay rights, but if they were going to have a positive pro-gay rights ruling, it was thought that they might do it on equal protection grounds, saying that you shouldn't discriminate against gay people just because they're gay, or it might happen on sort of a state's rights grounds. There was reference to state's rights, to federalism, that this ought to be something that the federal government doesn't do and the states do it. That was referenced in the ruling, but it seems like that wasn't the main thrust of the ruling. Is that right? I agree. I mean, Justice Kennedy did exactly what we asked him to do. And one of the things that we said that was so pernicious about DOMA was, and showed what was really at stake, that it was a statute solely about denigrating gay people, is the fact that it was the first time ever in our country's history where the federal government failed to respect the marriage laws of the states. And that that fact showed what was really going on here, which it wasn't about anything other than treating gay couples differently solely because they were gay. And thank God the court understood that. Justice Scalia, in his dissent today, responded to that point by saying, well, if you can't say that you can't have laws just because you don't like gay people, well, then we're really in trouble. And this means the states are not going to be allowed to decide that marriage equality doesn't apply in their states. This means that it's going to be struck down even in Utah and in Alabama. He, of course, is horrified by this prospect. I'm less horrified by the prospect, but I think he might be right. Do you agree with him? Well, I, too, am less horrified by that prospect, <laughs> Rachel. Um, and he was right about Lawrence. In the Lawrence case, as you pointed out earlier, in predicting what happened today. And let's all hope he's right today in predicting what will happen with marriage nationwide. But do you think he is? I mean, what, if, if, hypothetical case, you've sure. got a couple that's...
Married in New York, moves to Utah, has federal recognition, but no longer state recognition, and they sue. The grounds, the ground that was laid today by Anthony Kennedy in this ruling seemed to me to lay a pretty fertile ground for their case striking down Utah's ban on same-sex marriage. I agree. Justice Kennedy today talked about the dignity of gay people, the dignity of their marriages, and the uh, constitutional right of gay people, just like any other Americans, to have their marriages respected under the law. And I agree with you that the same logic and the same principles should apply. In terms of what happens next, obviously those fights are now going to happen both in litigation and political fights. There, in, in every state in the country where there is a gay marriage ban, there is at least a teeny tiny little grassroots movement somewhere to try to overturn it. Do you, as a litigator, feel like the political momentum and the legal momentum intersect, that we end up in a different place because of, we end up in a different place politically because of law, legal cases like we like you won today. Absolutely, I think even if you look at our case, it was a combination of both the, the law and the courts winning the case. But remember, when we filed our case, uh, New York had not yet passed its statute allowing gay couples to marry. Uh, that's why Edie and Thea had to go all the way to Toronto uh, to get married because New York didn't have the law. That law was passed while we filed our case. When, we, when I argued in the Supreme Court, nine states permitted gay couples to marry. To today, 12 states plus California plus the District of Columbia. Um, what are you going to do next? Or at least, how are you going to celebrate? Uh, Edie is the Grand Marshal of the Gay Pride Parade on nice. Sunday here in New York, and it's going to be one citywide celebration. That's amazing. Roberta Kaplan, uh, the lawyer who represented Edie Windsor before the Supreme Court, uh, not a Supreme Court litigator uh, before this time, but uh, Edie's personal lawyer who took this all the way. Uh, thank you for being here.